Hi, folks. This is Dr. Rob Sivas. Uh, I am the Carb Addiction Doc, and this is a very on-point video in terms of what's happening with us right now. For those of you that, that are looking at vaccination, um, there's been a lot of noise being made about the J&J um, vaccine and the risk of DVT. Well, we're going to talk about DVTs because it's so important for us to know this inside the context of vaccination and outside. DVT stands for deep vein thrombosis. And the common, uh, 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 the common pathway of DVTs, of, of deep vein thrombosis, in our legs, we have two venous systems and a vein returns blood from the leg back to your heart. You got the deep system that runs along the bone, and then you got a superficial system. That's the one that becomes varicose veins that you see, the blue lines in your leg. That's the superficial system. And at various levels in your leg, it feeds to the deep system, and the deep system goes upward. And <clears throat> along that deep system, you got valves. Because obviously we're tall. Uh, if you're a giraffe, you're even taller. But the, what the valves do is they create a one-way pump-like action. So what happens in your legs is the muscles that surround the legs pump the veins, pump the vessels, and the vessel rises up in your in your vein, and then it gets trapped by this little valve, uh, little two little valves to trap the blood, and then the muscles pump and it goes back up to another level and it goes back up to another level, eventually going up to your heart. That's the way it works, and the blood from the entire body works along that venous system coming back to your heart. Now, what sometimes happens is if you get turbulent flow in those areas and you have inflammation of your vein, and we come to that in a second, inflammation, uh, you have that turbulent flow, stasis happens where it's just sitting there, and you get these little clots in those valves and in those vessels. <clears throat> One of two things can happen. The clots can damage those valves so that they're leaky. And that's where we get a lot of swelling in our legs. We get varicose veins because instead of the blood going from superficial to deep, it now backs up deep to superficial. You can get varicose veins. You can get swelling in your leg. But more importantly, if you've got inflammation, inflammation of the lining of those vessels, you can get a clot forming. And those clots then propagate up to each valve. And you get this long line of blood clot. You know, sometimes if you look at meat, you see that old uh, blood clot, or or if you've ever got cut and you see the clots, uh, or for women, I know this is horrible for guys, but women have to deal with this on a regular basis. If you look at some of the clots when you're having your period, the same kind of thing happens in these vessels. And those clots are very unstable. They're like gelatinous. And if those clots break off, they go up the big vessels, they travel up to the lungs, and they go through the heart into the lungs. And in the lungs, they can block the arteries of the lungs, because the arteries go toward the tissue. So you get a, um, uh, a pulmonary embolus. Em the word embolus means it's traveling upward, and it blocks the, blocks the lungs. And if you, if you block the lungs, now you're not getting blood going to parts of your lung. You're getting air coming into your lung, but you're not getting the oxygen being picked up. And <clears throat> DVT pulmonary embolus can actually acutely kill people if you don't get enough oxygen, or you're not getting the blood flowing through your lungs, or you can compromise your breathing dramatically by getting DVT pulmonary embolus. So it is a deadly condition, and the way we treat them is to thin the blood using various blood thinners, anywhere from aspirin to Plavix to Eliquis uh, to Warfarin to Coumadin. So we thin the blood so that it doesn't clot, and slowly over time, those clots go away. What also happens in the legs is you get fibrous tissue growing into that clot to stabilize it, and then that vessel is sealed, and now you're relying on your superficial system. So technically, that's what a DVT is. But here's the key thing. DVT shouldn't happen. DVT shouldn't happen. So they require two things to happen. Number one, they require stasis. So for example, if I'm sitting in this chair for a long time, or you're sitting on an airplane for a long time, or you're not moving and your muscle pump is not working, you get a clot. Secondly, inflammation inflammation. And the commonest cause of inflammation in the modern era, folks, is glucose, sugar. We've talked a lot in many other videos of how sugar damages those blood vessels. 
And DVTs are far, far more common in insulin-resistant people, in diabetic patients, in patients who have vascular inflammation. Same thing that same process that causes heart attacks and strokes, same thing happens in the deep venous system. You get inflammation, you get clotting activation, and you get that propagating throt, uh, a clot. And that is what's so dangerous. And the reason that people are getting DVTs during the COVID era much, much more so, is because COVID causes intravascular inflammation. But for most people, it's a non-issue. For most people, it's a non-issue. But if you have if you have insulin resistance, if you're obesogenic or diabetogenic, that risk, that inflammatory risk goes up tremendously. And under those conditions, that's where you get your DVT. So the three things you can do to avoid a DVT. Number one, mobility. Move around. Even if you're on an airplane on a long flight, get up and walk around. Wear compression garments. Understand that stasis and inflammation cause it. Number two, the single most important cause, actually, or, or, or thing you can do, get rid of carbohydrates from your diet. Reduce your inflammation. Get rid of carbohydrates from your diet. Get rid of your insulin resistance, and you will improve the integrity of your blood vessels, not only your veins, but also your heart. So a ketogenic diet is a very, very useful thing to do. And thirdly, anytime you are going to travel, anytime you're going to get into a place where stasis happens, it's always useful to take a baby aspirin for a day or two before, or possibly take a non-steroidal, an ibuprofen, something that affects platelet aggregation, thromboxane A2 inhibitors. That's what, a, that's what aspirin does. Take a baby aspirin a couple of times uh, uh, before you fly. When I go back home to South Africa from the US, it's a long flight, 17 to 20 hour flight. I'll usually take a baby aspirin for two or three days before. Even though I'm in a ketogenic diet, that's what I do. Of course, there are some outliers, some people who have genetic abnormalities, protein C, protein S, clotting abnormalities. They're at a higher risk for a DVT. They should always be anticoagulated at a high level or a low level, depending on their story. I'm not talking about that class of patient. However, DVTs, forget about J&J, &J, DVTs are a high risk that nobody really talks about when you are insulin resistant. And it's a common cause of death. It is a common, common cause of death, far more common than we actually speak about. And the direct cause for most people, the direct cause for most people is a standard American diet. Go keto, you radically reduce your risk of a DVT. And it is pertinent to us right now. Everybody's talking about it. I think we need to talk about it in the context of a ketogenic diet. Hope that helps you to understand what it is. Hope that helps you to motivate you to stay on this eating plan, make it your way of life. And if you like this video or, you, or you're interested in the management of DVTs or cardiovascular disease from diet, give us a shout. Text us to 561-517-0642, but also... Follow us on this Instagram, uh, on Instagram at Carb Addiction Doc. Follow us on this YouTube channel. And if you do follow us, hit the subscribe button. But more importantly, also um, hit the like button. Because Google does pay us for these and the money goes directly to the charitable organization that we've established. We have a nonprofit, 501C3 uh, or 3C, and that is where the money goes to. None of it comes to me. It goes toward education videos like this. Hope you benefited from this. We'll see you next time on this channel. Take care.